to introduce themselves, I pose a challenge to them. I challenge you to introduce yourself in good and understandable English without me correcting your English. If you can do that, then you have passed your challenge. Are you up for the challenge, Ken? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Please introduce yourself just very briefly, like your name, what do you do, are you working or studying, and um, your hobbies and interests. That should be enough. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, my name is Tim, and I live in uh, Vietnam, uh, in Ho Chi Minh City, which is the biggest city in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And I work as a uh, HR, uh, who is responsible for finding the uh, new candidate who work for my uh, English center. And uh, in my free time, I love traveling and I am a bookwormer. I can on read in different types of books and also hanging out with my friends at the end of the weekend. Yep, that's one Okay, about me. very good. A few questions. You said you like to read books. Do you also like to read English books or just Vietnamese books? What can you read? What languages can you read? I read both English and both. Yeah. Very good. What is your, um, what's the most recent book you read in Japanese? Give me one in, I'm sorry, Vietnamese and one in English. <laughs> what's your most recent books that you've read in these well, two languages? Uh, I read about the uh, HR book, which is the Kaisa Best book in uh, HR ah, to improve my uh, HR knowledge. Mm. You know, I need to learn some uh, HR mm. strategy or HR practice mm. to do the job better. Yeah, mm. in English. And uh, Vietnamese book. I okay. Read. All right. So that's in yeah. Vietnamese, right? In English. Mm -hmm. No, okay. I, I read it in English. So in English, what have, what have you read? Uh, can you hear me? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, a few seconds, your video and your voice was fading, but now I can hear you again, clearly. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, just skip okay. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, how about me? Can you hear me and see me clearly again? Yes, yes, now I can hear you and see you. Yeah. Okay, Tim, I just have a question. Um, you said you are responsible for um, English Central um, new applicants or new candidates. Is that correct? So you're working for English Central as well. Mm. Did I hear you correctly? Yes, you hear me correctly. I mean English center, which means uh, the uh, English uh, school in Vietnam, not in the yeah. similar name, but not totally different. Ah, I see. Okay, well, thank you for your brief introduction. Uh, I wanted to correct you on um, your pronunciation, a few words like candidate. It was not correct, um, but I didn't want to interrupt your introduction. So anyway, okay, I'll, I'll give you a passing score of maybe. I have very, very high standards when it comes to an 85, but if I'm being generous for today, I'll give you a 90% passing grade for your introduction. But usually if I'm being strict with my students, perhaps an 80 or an 85. There are few mispronounced words there, Tim, but okay, I just let it pass, okay? I didn't want to correct you. I would have had my introduction smoothly being delivered. All right, so but let's see, I have an 80% passing. For, for, my, uh, for my students, actually, I give like 90% passing, but I'll go to as low as 80, so you still pass 
challenge for today. Thank you. All right. So allow me to introduce myself before we begin the video lesson, just very briefly, so we can immediately begin. So my name is Teacher Carmen. I did management jobs, design for process and products and systems, innovation and implementation also. I teach math science, and recently I joined English as an English tutor. Okay, my interests and hobbies include also reading, but I haven't been reading in a while. So I'm not sure. I, I have been um, a few, you know, um, incidents uh, in, in the last few years, uh, sad and traumatizing incidents. But I, I was a very, uh, you know, I was a voracious, avid reader when I was younger. So perhaps uh, when I'm able to resolve uh, the current problems, then I will be able to to read back again a lot. And I also like photography, travel, music, playing the piano, dance, um, and uh, poetry and literature as well, and other arts and sciences that I'm into. Okay, so uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Kim. Thank you for your introduction. I hope we make the most out of our 25-minute session together. All right, yeah. we have a right. we have a video lesson today. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. Um, if if you notice, uh, we actually um have uh, changed the face of our video lesson. Um, so. Uh, if you're already, please read the transcript. You can yep. start. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kelly, can you hear me, Kelly? I can uh, hear you loud and clear. Okay. Good. Good morning. John Office Supply Customer Services. Kelly speaking. How may I help you? Speaking. 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 Not yeah. speaking. Speaking. I need to speaking. hear. Speaking. Speaking. Okay. Very good. Yeah. How may I help you? This is Brian Cell with Naron Packaging. I'm currently packaging? about packaging. Packaging. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. I need to hear. I needed to hear the P, not a B sound. P. P. Packaging. Yeah, P. Packaging. Very good. I'm calling Go about an order I played last Friday. It was supposed to arrive this morning, but it still isn't here. I'm sorry to hear that. Mr. Sir, do you have the order number? Yes, it's BT5514R. Three is two boxes of printer card cartridges. Cartridges, card cartridges, not cartridges. Cartridges. Okay, very good. Cartridges. Go ahead. The sales person was thief, and he promised that. Uh, he promised me that. The order would be here before noon today. I see. BT five five one four R three, right? Mm. We don't seem to have a record of that order in our system. Let me check system? with system. Yeah. Mm. System. Let me check with the sales department. Would you mind waiting for a moment? Well, I gotta not wait. This is second time this month you've been late with one of my orders. Have stay on me back after you straighten it out. Okay, very good. So I think uh, for the most part, if you are familiar with the pronunciation or the word, then you can pronounce it correctly. But two things, because you're mispronouncing because number one, you do not know the word. So like cartridges, cartridges. Perhaps it's the first time you have encountered them in reading it aloud. Then number two, you're also pr mispronouncing words because of your accent. 
like system, system. You're, you're not reading the all the sounds that I need to hear. So you have to be careful, okay? When you're trying to read especially aloud. Because reading aloud also translates when you are speaking and you are uh, having an informal conversation in English. And it's good, especially if you're working for an English institution. You said you are working for an English institution as well. Then it's good to also be a good communicator in English. Just, just be careful with those two, two notes, okay? All right, so if you notice also, um, there are highlighted words in red color here on the transcript. These are the featured words. So, Tim, I want you to read the featured words under the vocabulary. Read them aloud first. Mm, yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vocabulary, right? Supposed. Uh, supposed to? Yeah, supposed to. Okay. Cartridges. Cartridges. And sales person promised record. Okay, very good. Um, when you're reading the words one by one, you actually sound better because you know you you you're not pressured to actually read the entire sentence. So when you're reading the entire sentence, are you able to pronounce all of? the sounds correctly in English. Okay, very good. Um, we have five words here. In this part of the lesson, we will be creating sentences using these words so that later on when you encounter these same words again, you're able to incorporate it in your vocabulary and you can use it in your daily conversation. Okay, since we don't have much time because we used the first part in introducing ourselves, about, uh, you know, eight minutes, nine minutes, I believe. So let's do just three out of the five words here. So choose three words, Tim, that we will use in a sentence each. What is your first word of choice? Uh, salesperson. Salesperson. Okay, go ahead. Please use it in a sentence. Salesperson try to approach my company to sell cartridges. Mm. Salesperson try to approach my company to show cartridges. Okay, there are a certain a few um, notes that you need to to um, remember based on your first sentence. Okay, first, don't forget your use of articles. So you usually the, these are common mistakes of international students trying to learn English. You can say a salesperson and then you say approach, right? So you are only, um, your subject is only one salesperson. So if you're using singular in your subject, there is a, there is a subject verb agreement that should be found on your sentence. So your, your verb, which is approach, should be in singular. So what is the form of your singular verb? It is with an S or an ES, depends on the spelling, right? So in approach, it should be with an ES. So approach as a salesperson. Oh, I'm sorry. I think in your in your in your in your context, yeah. approach is with a past tense with an ED instead of an ES. So it's a salesperson approach to me. To show and then you say cartridges. Another article needs to be used here before cartridge. You say a salesperson approached to me to show me some cartridges. Okay. Okay. Something like that. So a few polishing of your sentences, Tim. All right. Be very careful, yeah. especially with tiny, tiny parts of speeches that will make or break your sentence. Be very careful in using your words. Okay, let's do number two. What is your second word? And let's yes. try to use it in a sentence. Okay, yes. Uh, some some cartridges are 
supposed to deliver today, but it's not here yet. Mm, some cartridges are supposed, so you said supposed to deliver today, but it's not here yet. Okay, just um, you have not used the to be verb very carefully. So you say some cartridges are supposed to be delivered, and that they it's a uh, for it. So, but it your cartridge. Since cartridge is in plural, cartridges, your it should be, but they aren't here yet. Okay? Be very careful. Subject verb agreement. Okay? And then your subject pronoun pronoun agreement. So, yeah. The, 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 actually, uh, you know, in daily conversation, you're acceptable. But, you know, if you are actually speaking good English, you can, you know, you can create some sort of um, uh, confidence in 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 your audience, in perhaps in the other person you're talking to. That ah, okay, this person can communicate well, so he must be a a good person to deal with. So uh, just try to be very careful with uh, with the tiny 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 details of your sentence. Okay, articles um, to be verbs. The pronouns, the use of your pronouns and your verbs should should um, be in agreement with the subject or the nouns that you are trying to define or describe. Okay, the third word, please. What's your third word? Mm, promised. Promised, okay. Yes, I promised uh, to... Book appointment with my teacher tomorrow. I promise to book appointment with my teacher tomorrow. You know what? This is actually a good sentence. This is the best sentence that you've created so far. The only problem is you were not able to use the article again with appointment. It's better to say, I promise to book an. an? Why an? It starts with a vowel, right? An appointment with my teacher tomorrow. This is actually good. I was, I was kind of, you know, at the beginning, I said, okay, I think he's now sounding better. And then you forgot the N article, but that's fine. Um, it takes a while, really. And mostly for my articles, it's, if it's not articles, it's prepositions that they, they have mistake with. And then subject verb agreement, really. But like, if it's singular here, it should be singular here as well. And sometimes they, they, they miss that. But you can work on it. They are very simple, simple rules in English. And if you can, if you can perfect that, that's better. Okay. So we have five minutes left in class, and we have com comprehension and discussion questions. Let's see, for comprehension, since you are not really a beginner student, I can understand you can understand me. We'll do comprehension questions like this. Just read the question to me. Yes. Give me the answer right away. You don't have to read the choices. Go ahead. There are three questions here. Okay. What was the problem with the order? Mm, is the one not yes delivered? Now let us say the answer. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, sorry, I had to turn off my video. I, I'm, I'm having a slight uh, wheezing, sneezing, and out of respect for you, I had to turn off the video. That's correct. It, it's not yet. He hasn't received it yet. Very good. Number two. So it was late in arriving to, to the person. Number two, please. Why did Brian Cheryl decide to do? Uh, Brian can't stay directly. Let us say the idioms. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. 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 Let us say, right? 
Um, he he was not actually able to uh, call Steve directly. He um he Stay. yeah he he stayed on the line and he said that he will wait for Steve's call. But anyway, um, um I... mm, that's correct. Number three, please. When did the man place the order? Mm. That I see it. Yeah, noon today. The order. If you can go back last, to last Friday, last Friday. Okay, very good. The transcript says last Friday. Actually, yeah. um, for number two, um. He did not stay on the line, okay, and um, but he was waiting for a call. So he, he did not call Steve directly as well. He called the same number, their like their hotline number for delivery. He did not want to stay on the line, so he just said that um, he is waiting for a call first from Steve. Okay, very good. That's correct for number three. Now um, we have like two minutes left for the discussion part. This is actually my favorite part. So let's just have one good question here. I'm going to ask the question this time and you will answer me based on your opinions and your ideas, your own opinions and ideas on the content of the video. OK, Tim, so let's see. We have three questions. Mm. Number two. Is it important to make a complaint? Why or why not? I actually have a follow up question here. If you can answer me very briefly, then I'll follow up the question. Go ahead. Number two, is it important to make a complaint and why? Uh, yes, absolutely. It's, it's very important to make a complaint in the proper way. Uh, this is because when some companies offer services for you but they do not uh, offer the services the exactly what they say or we use the services we use their products which is in not the uh, qualify quality uh, from what they advertise so that's mm -hmm. why we complain about that to get something in quality something nice. to get the fairness yeah mm. i agree I, I i actually do agree as as a customer if i am the customer i would like to be given the proper service as well the quality the highest quality of service that i deserve and that i would also be the one giving if i am if i'm the one uh, doing the service if i'm i'm the uh, uh I'm serving and then the customer is on the other end of the line. But I have a follow up question before I let you go before I end this class. Sometimes have you had, um, you know, as a customer, he, you complain. But as, as as the giver of the service, sometimes we also receive some unfair complaints, perhaps from, you know, from biased or prejudiced um, opinions. Do you think um, how do you balance between because it's it's OK for a complaint if it's warranted, if it's really deserved. But some complaints also, some opinions may not be, you know, may, may be directed against the person and not the actual quality of the service. Sometimes it is racism also. I've worked with customer service and I've had that like, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to an American, although you've really actually opened the call very well, very nicely. You've given the best quality of service, but they're just biased against you because you are this kind of race. I I've had those kinds of calls. So what is your opinion on that? Very briefly, we have extended about a minute on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you I've had that. The, I the buyer try to complain uh, to get the bargain because not really the service or products is not qualify, uh, not quality, but just because they want to make a complaint. You mean that? Yeah. How, mm. how do you deal with that? I've, I've been on the customer. I've, I've had a few customer service, you know, responsibilities on the on the phone, on video like this. And 
I, I've had good calls. Like, you know, maybe you weren't well, able to deliver the right, the right the service, best. but some, right. some, some complaints also are. Uh, the best way we try to uh, boot uh, ourselves into their position and taxi and let's see what they feel, what they think in terms of uh, our services. We, we try to, we are, we are their shoes. Mm -hmm. and Maybe. <laughs> we are doubt, yeah, why, why the reason, yeah, they give a few reason or they, they make the assumption for that. Okay. Well, well, Ken, I, I'm sorry, Tim. I wish I can, I can spend more, you know, con a few minutes with you. But I have another class in a few minutes. Anyway, I appreciate your opinions. Um, you're not able to deliver it in good English, but I understand. I think you're a good person. Um, you know, with the way you speak, and your opinion. So you're, you're careful, and you have good, you know, positive views. But yeah okay so thank you uh, i i hope you enjoy learning english more do good in your responsibility in your job as well <laughs> and yes. uh, i hope to see you again next time in class okay take care stay safe and happy weekend thank you for coming to my class today thank you so much bye bye, -bye. <clears throat>